What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Binge Town TV and our coverage of Jujutsu Kaisen. So this is episode five, titled Premature Death. We get the end, basically, of this flashback into Ghetto and Gojo. Before we discuss all of that, classic Binge Town housekeeping, um, we are surpassed. We have surpassed, rather, 400 episodes. If you have found us on the Jujutsu Kaisen feed only, that might shock you because there's only been however many episodes of Jujutsu Kaisen. That is because Spinchtown TV is a podcast that does way more than just this, way more than anime. Uh, we've been covering, Jesus, 70 plus shows at this point. We have a main feed, which is just Spinchtown TV. Uh, so that's going to be every show we cover. We just wrapped up The Witcher, Secret Invasion, Cruel Summer, Silo. Uh, One Piece is coming down the pike at the end of the month. Wheel of Time is coming at the beginning of September. So um, we've been doing this for three years. We're going to keep doing it for probably three more. Who knows? How much longer after that so if you want to support us the best way is to probably subscribe on whatever you're listening on right now or watching on um and then go to the binge town main feed subscribe to that too you'll get notified of all of the shows that we cover then social medias for us is just at binge town tv on pretty much everything and then discord we have a, a discord that has been kind of growing steadily over the past few weeks so if you want to just talk with us outside of maybe just comments in like youtube on or just like tweeting at us Discord's the best way to do that. We can just chat. You can chat with other people as well. It's not just us. Um, so there will probably be a link in the description of this episode, or if you just follow us on Twitter, the link is in our bio on Twitter. Okay, now back to the fun stuff. So episode five, Premature Death, very big uh, ghetto episode. And just funnily enough, I started watching the first episode and was like, okay, yeah, like we're getting this again. And then I was like, wait a second, this is the first episode. <laughs> so then I started watching this episode and they do the first episode, like discussion, talk and scenes again. And I was like, okay, this tripped me out a little bit, but uh, With very him big... saying, uh, it's like nobody yeah. knows what they taste like and stuff. Yeah. So a very big philosophical episode for ghetto. Um, there's really no like juicy buckets to discuss things. So we'll probably just take things kind of chronologically, I would say. First thing we could talk about is just like the beginning of the episode, just Gojo upgrading his power, uh, the results of his training, et cetera. It's just fun to see that, I guess. Oh, absolutely love this. I was telling Alki last night when I came back, um, I came back home, we were talking about the episode just very briefly. And I was just like, I, I don't care. I am such a Gojo stan. I just fit the, just the easy trope of like everyone else that follows the show. Like, I just love this man so fucking much it's just so cool how he just casually is like yeah i've already mastered you know red blue i can teleport basically and i have the ability to unconsciously identify danger and not and what's not dangerous so like when they throw the pencil and the eraser at him only the eraser goes through the pencil stops like and then he has his like spiel about how he uses his what's it called the energy that they they use just the cursed energy cursed energy um to just like kind of keep his brain fresh so it never fries out like it's just ridiculous yeah the how... reverse technique is ridiculous. And he's only reverse. in high school that was still. the part that blew that blew my mind he is just i cannot get enough of gojo and i know that just might be very basic but i just i don't care he's the best he's pretty much made to be that way so you know <laughs> obviously you're not alone in thinking that so. and it's obviously sweet that ghetto already has recognized like he is the strongest and they're probably they're in their second year now i think it is or maybe it's their final year i can't remember but uh, i believe it's kind of like the summer they're moving into their third year technically yeah he is just yeah. the absolute best i love him yeah and we get basically this is the beginning of <clears throat> ghetto kind of we're seeing those cracks start to form um he begins to question a little bit of his role as a sorcerer and um i think the next step is just kind of moving into we get reintroduced to Yuki Sukomo. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, we we saw her in season one in a Toto's flashback because that's the uh, mm. kind of like the the sorcerer that pretty much like trains him up or kind of first finds him rather on like that uh, the riverbank. She Honestly, the didn't remember question. her. Yeah, she just asked the classic question like, "What what's your type or whatever? You know, what kind oh, of girl are you now, into?" That makes so much sense now because that's yeah. his thing. Okay. Yep. Exactly. So oh, okay, um, that's cool. Him and her ghetto this is and, and Yuki just have a very interesting conversation that obviously is, you know, monumental in his life <clears throat> that she's so like kind of cavalier, cavalierly kind of 
saying things that he's kind of been thinking and almost like hating himself for thinking in some sense. So this conversation I thought was just very interesting. She's so uh, like chaotic neutral. And yeah. it's, it's interesting to see that point of view. Uh, she recognizes his thought process of like wiping out all non sorcerers as practical. You know, she's like, oh, it's, it's kind of a good idea, but you know, not entirely doable in the moment. Yeah, it's not entirely possible, and it's crazy that she considers it, but she like hovers that line so closely. We know that in modern times, she's not like full fledged good, but she's not evil either. She clearly trains Toto, so we know that she's like, she's got some good in her. It was just interesting to see that kind of uh, seed get watered by her in um, Ghetto's mind. Um, and I also like Ghetto's like design in this episode. I think he looks pretty cool. Just how he's like cl- like the bags under the eyes, and he's just yeah, he's like hairs long. He's got like this baggy fit. I like yeah, I, I like the look too. Cool. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, but this this conversation I think was it was very interesting, and I just wonder, it, you know, she probably was just there at the right time. Like I wonder if maybe. You know, if the principal had showed up in that moment, you know, would Ghetto have maybe considered maybe the righteousness a little bit more because she was, like you guys have said, a little bit more chaotic. Again, she's not entirely evil. We've seen her fight for the side of good, but her mindset kind of emphasized a little bit maybe too much in Ghetto's mind what he was already thinking. Um, So I just I'm curious, like he was in a moment of weakness here, and I just am curious if like if what would have happened if Gojo showed up here and had this heart to heart to him rather than uh, this woman. So it's just, it is cool. And it's, I, I just like how ghetto ends up going down that, you know, quote unquote wrong path. Uh, you know, it's very ethical dilemma, especially later on when we get to the, the moment that sends him over the edge, but for yeah, the now, I mean, this scene was great. Yeah. And we've kind of been wondering almost of, we've seen him in the past and he's kind. And we've talked about how, you know, him and Gojo at the start of this season, felt like they were in completely opposite places than like the way that we were introduced to them, the way we knew them. And this is pretty much kind of like the episode where it basically flips completely. Um, so yeah, it, she just kind of lays it out that there's only two options to create a world where cursed spirits don't exist. That kind of is her goal. I like her I, when she kind of says that like um, Jujutsu High and kind of like most, pretty much the whole Jujutsu world, they only treat symptoms, not like the actual causes. Like they're just exterminators. They don't actually try to, to make any meaningful change. Um, I just like that that's kind of like the the baseline of her character. I just think that that's like super interesting. And I just <laughs> she's just a funny character to me, too. Um, and also, I'm like, you know, I, the biggest Toto fan ever. So she also has, you know, a higher level of respect in my eyes because that's my fucking boy. Yeah, she's also sick. Like her power is pretty sick as you get we, to uh, as she unravels in the in the story. Yeah. And she does throw uh, some respect onto uh, onto Toji's name as well. Because she kind of says that basically when she breaks it down, there's two ways to make a world with no cursed energy. The first one is to eliminate cursed energy. She talks about how he was basically the the prime example of that. He was almost like, you know, pretty much like a perfect example, perfect specimen. She literally calls him superhuman, which we kind of already knew about. But she does throw ghetto like, hey, it's not that bad that you lost to him. Because Well, she, well, like she was saying, I'm actually glad you brought it up because I wanted to bring up the heavenly um, restriction. He was a perfect case of that. And we were deliberating about what exactly that meant. So it's it's nice that they clarified how his was the extreme case that worked so perfectly that made him the way he was. And it's pretty sweet that he had no curse energy. He That means he detected curses with his senses completely, which is like something that is against the laws of the world as we've known it up until his character was introduced. Yeah. Uh, you know... I honestly, in in retrospect, I think the fight in the manga was better. I feel like he was in and out so quick in the anime. Yep. It was a little bit uh, bittersweet, you know. I, I um as it settled in, I think that they could have, I don't know, played him out a little better. But it is what it is, and she was really nice in uh, shedding light on his like backstory a little bit, and it tied in nicely at the end of the episode when. Gojo met uh, Fushiguro. Yeah, you know, I know it's jumping ahead, but you know I could easily use more Toji in my life. But yeah, yeah, I, like <laughs> I would always good. vouch for that. 
Give yeah, me a so Toji is- spinoff show. That would be exactly what I would want. So we're getting ghetto. He's questioning in his mind. Now he's getting some level of external validation that his thoughts aren't, you know, completely, maybe not. I mean, she does say it's crazy to kill all non-sorcerers, but I mean, there's other people in the world that are thinking along the lines that he's thinking. I feel like that gives him a little more potentially confidence in it. Um, the next thing that happens is, you know, his classmate or his kind of um, his little youngling. I forget his name and I'm so sorry. Ibarra, I'm his name. Ibarra or something like that. There you go. Exactly. He ends up dying on a mission with, I believe, I don't know if Nanami was there, but he was kind of Nanami, Nanami and him were friends. Basically, it was a, a misclassified, cursed spirit. He's dead. And Ghetto, again, is now thinking like, you know, the only outcome of being a jiu-jitsu sorcerer is a mountain of com- of my comrades' corpses. So just another event that's piling on top of him. And then uh, kind of all boils over when he gets a job, which is he, he's going to a village that had cursed spirits there, obviously. He exterminates them. And he's getting so upset that these non-sorcerers because I guess they couldn't see the cursed spirits. So they didn't really know what was going on. But these two little girls who clearly are sorcerers, they could see them. And they, I guess the villagers, whatever, thought that they were it. So they were calling them monsters. And that kind of tipped him over the edge of like having these non-sorcerers be so mean to sorcerers. And that kind of, you know, he flips. And they were a little battered up. So I guess that implies they abused them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like this scene obviously makes it so like, we understand Ghetto's drive. We understand what he, what really made him what he is today. And, you know, like obviously killing an entire village is wrong, but he, he wasn't, I guess, entirely in the wrong of like wanting to actually like, you know, do something about it and like saving the girls. Like that part of it was, you know, righteous and everything. But the fact that he killed a hundred and what was it? 30 people who, I don't know if they all thought like those two specific people did, but, you know, I can I can at least understand the anger and rage that is coming from Ghetto here, and uh, I just and those are the two girls that I'm assuming are like in the present with him, like the ones that are always on the phone. Which again, that I think is really cool that we you know they get tied in even later on and yep. are still a major part. Um, it just it's a whole moral dilemma, and I mean it's just really cool just getting that side of Ghetto and just understanding that you know. If he's not just, you know, pure evil. He does, in his mind, have some righteousness to him. And we were, like, somewhat introduced. We know, essentially, that this happened at some point. Mm-hmm. But getting to see it, like you're saying, and getting kind of his perspective on it, I think, obviously, adds, like, a whole other dimension to his Gojo's character. reaction to it was, like, incredible, too. I thought, yeah. to, like, if we want to get into yeah. it, I guess, right now. Oh, yeah. Now. I mean, we're right here. I mean, it's crazy. He fucking he ends up killing his parents, too. It wasn't like it, oh, yeah. it wasn't that... a one-off in the village. Like, he went to his hometown and did the same exact thing. So, clearly, think... it was more than just, like, a one-off, like, emotional moment. I think, uh, I don't know, in this uh, portrayal through the anime, I felt like Ghetto's uh, village, in, village, excuse me, village villain origin story <laughs> was kind of shallow. I have to be honest. I thought it was a little weak, like... With the tone of the episode, with him starting the episode explaining how Ghetto is the strongest now, in me, in my opinion, I felt there was a tone of jealousy, a tone of spitefulness. They ended the episode with him saying, oh, don't say it's impossible when it's possible for you. So it's like, okay, I feel like he does have these thoughts of disdain for non-sorcerers, but also they're fueled by his inability to match Gojo. And I just feel like it's a little bit immature, you know, because we've seen him be smart and level headed and and uh, cognitive, logical. And I just uh, I guess I didn't pick it up this way when I read it. I just wonder if maybe like him consuming the de- like all those things. Like, he I think to be plays- mentally worn out, too. I feel like he's like you're saying yeah, Dave, like- his, his power. And they, I mean, they, they brought it literally up again, word for word, the same thing of like, no one knows what it's like. So I feel like he, he felt alone. Now he feels more alone. And I feel like that isolation obviously just pushes him more and more towards this. And then he's seen those girls who were, you know, also isolated and like. I do uh, agree though, the times of jealousy. I mean, he obviously, you know, he has an ideal about the world and if he could, he would like to be able to, you know, realize it and do everything he can. And it would be much easier if he had Gojo's power to do so. I can see I why you. All, all I'm saying yeah. is, like at the beginning of the uh, the flashback, I was like liking Ghetto, and I actually expressed that on this podcast. But 
um now i'm just like oh this i'm i'm totally against him and i mm. recognize him as the villain of this arc or story however mm. you want to go with that yeah and sh i mean shoko does say to him he meets up with her in public after kind of um we find out that he's been sent to death the principal and gojo have that talk and then him uh ghetto and shoko meet up in public and she tells him that it's childish mm -hmm. yeah exactly and i actually like that interaction a lot she's like oh what's up oh yeah. is it true yeah yeah it's like, it's like no oh it's way. the criminal yeah. yeah and then she's like oh gojo by the way i'm here with him he's in shibuya gojo's like i guess says yo engage him and she's like i'm not gonna do that he crazy yeah. <laughs> it was yeah it was I funny getting was funny it was funny seeing her reaction with him and then like because immediately before him we get gojo's reaction who was like completely stunned by the events i mean that kind of shows how kind of honestly self-centered gojo is i mean i'll i'll talk a little shit on my boy here for a second <laughs> just like he obviously was spending a lot of his time like focusing so much on training, doing these missions, becoming the strongest person alive. And he never reached out to his friend who, you know, was clearly going through some shit and wasn't really being a good friend in general and could have easily had reached out when he like just in any moments and just said, you know, how are you holding up? Like, exactly. I know, like you just witnessed, you know, the star plasma vessel get shot right in front of you. Like you, you well, were going through some shit, like how you holding up and he never did that. So I, that kind of shows Gojo self centeredness but I also feel like because he saw ghetto go down this road, he now understands more so that he was selfish. Like when he's reflecting on, like when he's talking to the principal or whoever it is, I think it, it's a principal. Yeah. Yeah. And he's yeah. kind of, he's, he's talking, he's like, I want to help. Like, I want to be a good, like, I want to be a better person, Jay, basically yeah. in general. And I think, Gojo, like Ghetto going evil, obviously allowed paved the path for Gojo to become less mature. It sucks that it's at the cost of losing a friend, but he definitely became he was definitely self centered before that. I um, you mentioned earlier, like oh, if it wasn't what's her name, Yuki, right? Yes. It was like oh, maybe if Gojo had that conversation with Ghetto, could have went a different way. Uh, Gojo was not deep enough to have this conversation with yeah. Ghetto. You know, he would have never been capable of even providing that like guidance or insight that ghetto needed you mm -hmm. know what i yeah, mean he was sure. he's, and now unfortunately this situation and event has given gojo that depth that he needs to become the jo gojo we know in modern times and he says it. he's like it's you know it's like it's not enough just to be strong there's also you need to save of you need to people. Some people just don't want to be saved. Essentially, in in more or less words, he said something like that. Yeah, yeah. and I think that's my that, favorite line of the episode. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he, um, from there, that's when you see him become the sensei. That there was like the first domino in his path. Yeah, you know, Geto's path has been laid out. He laid it out himself, and uh, now Gojo's is paved yep. as well and i mean and now how you and now you see the story unfold with the end of the episode with our main character main trio come back which got Yeet. me pretty freaking hype it was yeah. hype seeing them back together all smiling and gojo smiling just remembering i guess the good days with ghetto and uh, i forgot the girl's name no bar and, um, which Shoko. is not is that not no you're talking about shoko no okay. is i was gonna say is that yeah, not the day. The girls. Yeah, now you're good. I just and Alki just to even hammer your point home. I feel like the conversation that Gojo and Ghetto have is like clearly like Ghetto is a man with conviction. Like he has a plan on his life. He has made a decision. And Gojo is just kind of being like, hey, man, don't do this mm -hmm. type of deal. Like he doesn't have any level of like conviction or like, no, he doesn't really have any substance of a comeback. It's more of just like I just think he doesn't wrong. understand emotions. Like he's just yeah. so into himself again that he just doesn't understand other people's like he's just so about like i'm the strongest like i can do whatever i want i don't really care for other people in a sense i, I don't even think it's rooted in that much arrogance i think the guy is just freaking aloof he's never yeah. been truly he's never yeah. been truly challenged in his life in the beginning he's like hey ghetto what's the matter did you lose weight and he's like ah, it's the, whatever and yeah, whatever like he said is summer heat and then gojo could have been like like you, Are sure, you sure or like something you want to yeah. talk about something but instead he's like oh maybe you've been uh doing this too much or whatever it just totally brushed him off and uh like i said this event has added that depth it's a rude awakening you know but it's added him it's gave him that depth that he needed to become like the hero 
of of you know his era. So yeah, um, I mean it's just it's just good stuff. Yeah, I'm, their it was face such... off in the in the, like the sidewalk was pretty cool. Uh, they were like so far apart, and he's just, like yeah. walking away. He knew, oh, kind of yeah. knew. He kind of knew like Gojo is not gonna fuck do anything. Like he challenged yeah. him, and he was I guess ready to accept his fate of getting demolished by Gojo, but he just knew it wasn't gonna happen. I I, I thought that was kind of badass. Yeah, I think. I mean, what he says, he says, "Go ahead and kill me if you want." Like there would be a point to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then just nothing. Gojo couldn't do it. But um, I guess just one last thing we didn't really cover so much is like the this is Geto's kind of next steps. He is you know alive after the interaction with Gojo, which I'm sure for him is is obviously a positive. And he basically pretty much takes over the Time Vessel organization. He kind of commandeers their resources. They're in like a bunker or something like that. Um. And the little girls are with him, like Dave mentioned, and he goes out and is pretty much says like, hey, I'm the fucking boss now. Uh, people don't really like it so much. He just kills someone right in front of them on stage and was like, this is how it's going to be. Like, you're literally going to obey me. And that's obviously the start of of kind of the the ghetto that we met in season one. He's wearing like the robes when he meets with the cursed spirits like this is more obviously aligned with our first meetings of him. And he uses he keeps using the words monkey now. Yeah. And the other I think, thing, important thing to mention as well is that we find out that the star plasma vessel is more than likely already been born, if not is is been like it's because it was about like a year since the last episode. We it's opened some months the, at least or a few months, several months, yeah, whatever. But we time. do know that the several star plasma vessel and I think that'll obviously be important for this new season, because I think whatever that time skip is like if Megumi was in first grade, he's now in high school. That's definitely almost. I don't, you know, just pulling basic math out of my head, like a little less than 10 years, I'm guessing. So the per- the star plasma vessel should be around that age, I'm getting. And so that'll be important, I think. They did give years, but I don't remember. But all I know now yeah, is I don't remember. 2018 and JJK. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I'm confused by one thing, actually, and I'm embarrassed to admit as a veteran that I don't know the answer to this. <laughs> right, but, um, perfect. but um, okay, Toji is Megumi's dad, Fushiguro's dad. And he refers to his sister, Tsumiki, and he said her mom. So are they, like, biologically not related? Like, I don't... Do they share a father? I don't know. It's, I it honestly, interesting. When does he mention that? The, I didn't even know he had a... I mean, it makes sense that he would have a sister, but when does he say that again? He was like, what's going to happen? If I go to the Zenin clan, what's going to happen to Tsumiki? Like, will she be happy? And Gojo was like, absolutely not. He's like, okay, then I'm not going with them. And Gojo oh, you're like, talking about Megumi has... Yeah. Oh, I thought yeah. you were talking and about he Toji just said, for like, some reason. He said, like, her mom, it doesn't matter. Like, we'll do whatever. Her mom's not here. I didn't... And I just thought that was funny. Like, what is her mom? It might have been a mistranslation or something. I don't know, because I... it was the same in the manga. Okay. I took I, it I as... Mean, I just... We I we learn about his mom later. Does she specifically say my sister when referring to her? I didn't catch that. I feel like he was just talking about, like, a family who's... I took it as, like, it's a fam... Like, just a random family that's kind of adopted him, and he's just referring to them like that because he's not actually part of the family but i am not sure really i may have just been filling in the blanks as someone who knows the story a little better and implied that she's like comment sister, down but... below if you know the answer yeah yes. I, I have an answer right now it looks like so yeah i guess they they actually share a dad okay there you go but um but, but toji they, just went around just bang no, rather probably. rather this they so <clears throat> toji bangs megumi's mom she died after giving birth to mm-hmm. Megumi, and then he was was hooking up with um, other moms. His, yeah, the other mom, but but she had the daughter from a previous relationship, so they don't have the same dad or the same mom. I guess they just They're kind of like it was like a step. Yes, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, glad we cleared that up because but... she's not a. I guess she's not a curse user. I mean, we'll find out, but. Doesn't I'll say a uh, Mag- little baby Megumi was definitely pretty cute, though, even though he was so, like, serious. <laughs> I love the Gojo. He's just like, are you sure you're a first grader? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just funny to watch because it's like, obviously, I feel like sometimes it's easy to forget, like, the connection that the two of them have, Gojo and Megumi, because obviously, like, Itadori is our main character and Gojo is like a goofy guy, but, like, they have a ton of history together. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You know, um, sometimes it's easy to lose sight of that. This has confirmed that Megumi's been running with Gojo basically since he was a kid. Yeah, for like a long. He's almost long like time. Ra- raised. He's like he raised Megami. You know, you could say. Yeah, pretty much. If, I mean, in terms of, especially in terms of like you know, jujitsu and sorcery. I oh, mean, for sure. Pretty much, daddy, right there. Um, yeah. So yeah, so we're back. 
in the present time, seemingly, basically, um, we're kind of we've wrapped up our our flashback, and I'm excited to just hit the ground running in the uh, in the quote unquote real world, the real timeline, just because the upcoming arc is just fucking awesome. I mean, the fights are going to be fucking banging. It's just. I, just I don't even know what to expect, to be honest. I have no idea. What to <laughs> I, I'm just I so say, confident man, it's going to be store, awesome. We're in store for pretty some pretty good fights coming up, man. They do fights well in this show, and there's a bunch coming up, so I'm very, very excited. For I don't know happen. if it's going to cover. I think this season will cover this arc, or at least dive into it. Like This arc that's coming up is, is like freaking insane. I can't, like, I literally, like I can't wait. Game, I've been... Like end game level, like intensity i can't wait i I do genuinely love this show it's definitely been one of my favorite anime to watch and i'm excited to keep going with you guys it looks like unfortunately we're gonna have like a couple recap episodes i feel like they do that in the meantime it's gonna be 24 though right it's gonna be 24 episodes i think it's gonna be 25 and there's two of them is going to be like recap ones kind of and then um, it'll be episodes six, technically, through 23 will be uh, what we're talking about, Elk. I'm happy that... Um, oh, really, Kyle? Nice. Yeah, it I'm looks happy. like next week is... And I'm sorry to step over you, but is, is Gojo's past arc and JJK Zero movie recap. And then August 17th's episode is going to be Jujutsu Kaisen season one recap. And then August 31st is going to be the the next arc starts so Just basically kind of we're on a three-week break of recording pretty much i there's no need for us to really cover those episodes unless we want to talk about the movie but yeah. i mean we could slide in a little demon slayer talking about the watch the fucking finale at some point oh tr- i guess yeah we all right so our next <laughs> anime recording will definitely cover the, the whole <laughs> season of demon yeah because demon slayer season three has been insane it's so I told good. you, man. It's so it's good. So good. All right. So good. We'll save that. We'll save that conversation for another time. So that wraps up Jujutsu Kaisen episode five, premature death. We've kind of lost Ghetto down this life of being a racist, essentially, which is a uh, who's sad more to racist, see. Frieza or Ghetto? In the comments, let us know. Oh my god, that's a tough question. <laughs> that is tough. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, well, they both have pretty similar goals. Frieza so. wiped out an Frieza entire planet. Frieza actually wiped them out. Yeah, yeah. Frieza wiped out an entire planet. Up. If like Ghetto yeah. actually were to accomplish his goals, that then we yeah, would true. have a conversation. Ghetto, Ghetto wishes he was Frieza. Yeah, yeah. Or at least at some <laughs> part. Okay. Yeah. So if you like what you heard, if you like what you've been hearing, I would subscribe to us on whatever you've been listening or watching on. Like we said, we'll probably take a couple week hiatus just because the recap episodes feel like it's not really worth it for us to cover them on the podcast but maybe we'll talk you know we'll slide in some demon slayer talk just some anime talk just to fill kind of that quote unquote dead air even though what episodes are coming out and then august 31st is when the new arc starts so we'll fucking hit the ground running alongside one piece oh my god dude it's just this is what we dreamed of when we started the podcast is just trying to do as much anime and manga as possible so uh we're, we're finding it get, in slowly we're trying we're trying let's see how long it lasts all right uh and yeah that's pretty much all i got um thanks for listening